Right, so first time in a while I've been out to chop. Um, just been extremely busy with university work, which I've now finished. It was a dissertation, and uh, I've done it on uh, renewable concrete. So if anyone's interested in that, uh, I might make a video on it. But uh, anyway, I finally got round to grinding this uh, Tasmanian pattern axe. It's a braids um, sent to me by Owen, J Owen Jarvis, and it's. Uh, just been a while since I've had the time to do anything so yeah I've got it ground now it's about 20 degree chisel very very small micro bevel um, Owen actually made the handle so uh, let's see how it chops Not too bad. A little bit dry, not as tough as what I normally cut, but uh, still a good test. Grind's cutting good. Um, and that chisel with a very small micro belt, it's basically a racing axe, um, just at 20 degrees. And uh, yeah, it's working good. I could take it down further, but uh, I'm I think 20 is about good enough. Now, the handle Owen has made is very, very nice. It's very, very thin. I like the shape of it overall. It's got nice flats on it. Really, from here onwards, it's pretty perfect. Although I have one small complaint, and it's just this section here. It's just too thin. I'm just finding a little bit of uh, rolling with the axe. I was chopping earlier and uh, it's just a small complaint, but uh, I think when you're really going for it, um, when the axe hits the wood, it has just a little bit more chance to twist. And uh, this comes up with me, we're discussing two Atai axes. I thought the handle on the two Atai was about as good as it gets by the Basque axe, but uh, he wanted to thin his down a bit more, so it's probably personal preference, but uh, that's the reason I think to attire leave it quite thick here. It's just more control. Leaving it thick here doesn't matter too much as far as shock. The important thing is to have this entire section here thin to absorb shock, but here I like it a little bit thicker for control. So um, Again, this isn't a criticism of Owen, it's just uh, a bit of personal preference. So this is a very, very nice axe. I've been after one of these Tasmanians for a while, like a proper Tazzy pattern. I have the Hilco Tasmanian quote marks, but uh, I don't think it's a proper Tasmanian pattern. Apart from the silhouette being just a little bit uh, longer edge with a bit more of an upswept toe, it's really just a kind of generic shape, especially when it comes to geometry. The Hilco has like this sort of hardware store axe geometry Whereas this has a high center line and uh, makes a world of difference. It's also a lot thicker and chunkier, I think. Uh, you can see the edge of thinned it out a lot, but the overall 
design is a lot chunkier than most axes you'll see. Compared to the Braid's Yankee pattern though, I really don't think there's that much difference. The only thing I'd say is the heel and toe are thicker and the center line is lower. It's, it's less so obvious. Now I think what was going on there is in harder woods um, the heel and the toe being thinner potentially cause more damage so they thickened that up and uh, try to decrease the chances of that just breaking off and sacrificing a bit of the center line to do that just to flatten out the overall shape um, so that's the only real major difference I can see they're just slightly longer as well like a, an extra centimeter one and a half centimeters which when you're talking about a five inch axe it's really no difference performance wise it's cutting good but uh not anything different really uh, nothing significant um i think my halter falls i've bought with me the halter falls yankee patterns actually cutting in this wood a bit better um it's a, it's a thinner grind overall but uh it's very difficult to get much less than 20 degrees on this thickness of axe um i can take it down more but i'm going to end up grinding halfway up the cheek so I think that would just be kind of modding it back into an American pattern. Um, so I can see why they want a tough axe for Australia. Uh, I understand the, the problems there, but really what it is, is it's a design primarily for toughness. It's not a performance machine. It's, uh, you know, there's a lot of demand for Tassie patterns. They've got like a kind of, a lot of collector value. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm just not seeing anything major that makes it worthwhile. I think basically the long and short of it is if you're not in Australia, you don't really need this robust of an axe and an American pattern or a European pattern will outperform it. Cool though, and uh, I'm going to have a lot of fun using this and messing around with it. But uh, just to let you guys know um, my opinion on that. Okay, so here's my Holter Falls 1.5. <clears throat> this is the axe of kind of purpose built to cut this wood. Um, 16 degree chisel with a bigger micro bevel than I put on the Tassie. Tassie's at 20 with a smaller micro bevel. So I'd say they're probably the same robustness. Um, well, it's hard to measure that. And, but anyway, um, we'll just show you it chopping. <laughs> Forgive any missets there. This is a slightly crooked head that um, came from the factory. And it just takes a few swings to get used to it. And then, you know, if I'm using it all day, it kind of sorts itself out. But uh, I'm not really swinging hard there. And it bites in deep. I mean, a bit stickier. This is a bit greener than what I've made this for. But uh, in a lot of penetration of the sex. More cuts than I needed to overlap.
Okay, so I'm just gonna have a look at the penetration of these axes. Okay, so for the halter fours, the chip's coming up here, so I'd say call it to the stamp. And with the Tazzy about here, so So about two fingers depth and uh, the halter force has about three. That's uh, on a lighter axe with a shorter bit. This axe is three and a half pounds, this is four and a half pounds with a wider bit. Um, show that. So, yeah, about two centimeters. This is a four and a half inch bit. So this is a five and a quarter inch bit, I think. Um, in Greenwood, this will absolutely outperform this act. Wider bit is great in Greenwood, I find. The 20 degrees chisel uh, sticks a bit less, busts the chip a bit quicker. This axe, I don't really like cutting green wood with. It's very sticky, um, just because it's over-penetrating basically to the eye. But in Deadwood, um, this is king. What I will say is, Owen's done a great job of hanging this axe, and it's very, very straight. It cuts much easier um, because of that. Having your axe hung perfectly straight is just really important. Um, it's very difficult to be accurate with a crooked axe. You have to kind of practice with it a lot and then compensate and if you put that crooked axe down and switch to a straight one you'll notice the immediate difference in ease of cutting. Yeah, my cutting pace is a lot faster this. It's not sticking. It's a little bit bouncy in some bits, but... Okay, so found some green wood for this Tazzy to cut. It's a uh, sycamore. Um, not American sycamore, it's what we call sycamore in the UK, which is actually a maple. Uh, Acesoido platinoides, I think. So let's see how this axe does. Yeah. Cuts beautifully. As I suspected, this axe will cut greenwood very well. Stringy, stupid branches. I hate lemming hardwoods, especially a heavy axe. It's much easier with a light axe. There's a tangled mess.
So as far as uh, limbing axe grinds, if you're limbing hardwoods like this, especially green stuff, um, a chisel grind just slices through them so easily. With uh, softwoods, I kind of sometimes prefer a convex grind, um, a bit more robust, and when you're cutting right up to the trunk, I found the chisel grinds can kind of drag themselves into the knot rather than just to sort of bouncing a bit, like that bounce along the side of the log um, means that sometimes it just slices off really easy. So. Depends what you're doing, which grind works better, but uh, for hardwoods, personally, I think a uh, chisel for softwoods, uh, a, a slight convex in the edge is good. But uh, so far today, no damage. And see, hopefully, there. Just a little micro bevel on that edge. It's very, very flat. Good steel on braids axes. This Tasmanian, no exception. Really liking it. Okay, so I tried the Tazzy, didn't like it with felling, just not biting enough. So I'm back to my uh, halter fours for this felling. I think I might open that up a bit more. It's halfway now, but it's a bit of a leaner, so... I think making a bigger face cut on leaning trees actually uh, helps prevent barber chairs. With a chainsaw, if you try and make a bigger face cut, you get to here and your bar pinches. With axes, not so much. You can't really pinch them that bad. Even if you do, you're not going to damage them. So, putting in a bigger face cut means that I'm cutting the middle wood and the front wood at the compression wood. And then I've got very little uh, tension wood at the back to cut through, which means that uh, not uh, standing around as long, there's less chance of it barber chain because there's less time to cut for it. So, not really seeing that in any manuals or anything, but the source, sources are scarce when it comes to axes. But it's just something I've sort of observed. 